I remember as a novice carpenter being so proud of my plywood circular saw ripping jig. They were made uh, out of, you know, just plywood strips and they were my early versions of a track saw, minus the plunge cut capability. I was able to rip sheet goods as good as a panel saw, but obviously not as fast. Years later, I bought a table saw. I still use those guides for sizing the sheets um, before I finished them up on my table saw. Then came track saws and now we're dealing with the Festool HK Portable Carpenter Saw. It's a six and a quarter sidewinder saw and it's got these kind of cool tracks on it. The HK saw is offered in a cordless as well as a corded version. The cordless runs off of one 18 volt battery. I see them as a game changer, carpentry game changer. Targeting carpenters and cabinet makers, Festool designed the saws to provide the accuracy of a track saw with cross cutting and plunge cutting capabilities. That's pretty sweet. I'm talking a little bit about maybe uh, a a accurate field cutting. The Festool track saw propelled me personally in my field into a higher level of professionalism with my clients. And it was due to his accuracy, its integrated dust collection system. I, I wasn't making a mess of my client's house and the riving knife is safety, of course. While the track saw is amazing, still love it, I'd never bring it on a job site that wasn't at a finished carpentry stage. When you're framing, if you want repeated, same angle and accurate cuts, you use a miter saw or a wooden jig and a circular saw or you take your sweet ass time making that cut. But let's face it, Framing lumber is long and heavy, and who wants to be lugging it around? Without long outriggers, using a, a, a miter saw really isn't easy or fun. And that's what I like about the Festool HK saw. It actually brings the saw to the pile, the saw to the work. Talk a little bit about some of the features. Both saws are very similar. They're both right blade right saws. They bevel to 50 degrees. They have a two inch depth of cut at 90 and a two and three sixteenths cut when used off the track at 90 as a sidewinder. They ship with a 20 millimeter bore blade, thin kerf, 18 tooth blade, and Festool has a whole variety of specialty blades and some really cool ones coming out too. The depth of cut lever is new on the saw and I think it's better. It's located towards the rear near the dust port and basically to operate the lever, you use your thumb and forefinger and you just pinch them together and the saw just slides up and down, locks where you need it to go. It's really nice to use. It's intuitive movement and it's smooth and easy to adjust. And that's, that's the best part of it. Um, the depth of scale has two scales indicating blade depth, depth width and without using the track system. It also now comes with imperial scale markings painted on them, which I like a lot. Um, both saws come with a Sustainer 4T lock container. And there is a new dust port connector coming out. And, and if you're buying these saws new, you're probably gonna get it with it. It's, it's an accessory right now. It's an improved dust hose connection port. And the new connection port is available, like I said, as an accessory, but it provides a better, more secure connection. It prevents the hose from disconnecting as you move that saw. And that's happened to me a dozen times, I hate it. Well, they've solved the problem. It's really a nice system. And don't worry, it is completely compatible with all Festool's hoses, vacuums, and, and tools. Um, as far as dust extraction, both saws have a rear port swivel dust port, and there is an optional dust bag that you can get that works extremely well uh, collecting and stopping the larger airborne dust. The bag itself is kind of like accordion-like. It's got this spring-type frame that allows it to be folded for easier storage. One thing I did notice with that bag was that uh, when you tilt the saw forward, sawdust does come out. It also has a little cover that hangs a little low, makes me a little nervous. Um, the HK55 saws have built-in riving knife at the bottom of the blade guard, and that's obviously to prevent kerf binding kickbacks. Really nice safety. Festool thinks this stuff out, and I really like the blade pendulum guard placement. It's placed in, in the front middle of the tool, so it's not to the right side of the blade. It, it allows you to get kind of closer and make those zero clearance or tight clearance cuts, which is a really nicely thought out feature. Um, the, the saw has, um, I think I talked to you, the saw has two sight lines, one for circular saw cutting and one for the track. There is also a, um, a spring assisted lever and it's towards the rear of the dust port. And that's what controls the the plunge function of the saw when you want to maybe plunge off of the, uh, the track or something. It's a spring assist and it allows the saw to easily raise and lock and then lower for plunge cuts. The saw easily drops when you when you activate the handle and you, you grab the handle lower and the plunge cut just initiates. It's a really smooth, really 
precise movement. It's nice. Let's talk about track saw cutting because I just love the way that sounds. To me, track saw is, it means accuracy, professionalism, and proficiency. Sure, I can cut a straight line with a chalk line in my circular saw, but if you've ever used a track saw, there's no comparison. The HK55 saws are compatible with all Festool FS tracks. And the Festool FSK is a new track that's out. It's their cross-cut guard rail. And the cross-cutting guard rail looks like a mini track saw guard rail. There's a, whole, there's a bunch of different FSK rails with different cross-cutting lengths available for the saws. I think mine was a 16 and a half inch rail. Um, and, and, and it attaches to the saw. So basically the cross-cutting guard rail connects to the HK55 saw saw's shoe plate. And like the T55 saws, the shoe plate has those alignments in them. So you can get, you know, you can line it and get it lined up and tight. A slot in the shoe plate indexes into the tracks and T-rail. And there's a like a bungee cord, a spring-loaded clip that allows the saw to slide along Teflon strips on the track. On the bottom of this track are anti-skid strips and two pins. The pins align the board edges that are going to be cross-cut and they, they index against the board's edge and they stay in place to allow the saw to move but not the track. The left pin adjusts in a series of notches allowing the user to bevel in degrees. The right pin is fixed. The cross-cut uh, allows you to go 0 to 45 to the left and 0 to 60 to the right. Let's talk a little bit about the cordless saw. Mine's corded, but let's, I, I did play with the cordless, cordless saw a little bit. Uh, it operates on one battery, as I said earlier, and it, it's not as powerful as the HK55 corded saw with 4,800 RPMs versus 5,200 RPMs. Um, both saws come with a thinner kerf blade than the TS55 track saw, and that might be due to its efficiency for cutting. Um, it will work with a dust extractor, but does not have the remote, remote Bluetooth activation yet. I'm really hoping Festool comes up with a Bluetooth to turn the vacuum on. That'd be so sweet. Um, we like the HKC55 battery charger as well. It's got this integrated cord wrap on the bottom of the charger. Really nice, well thought out. Talk about uh, using the saws, because that's really what you want to hear about. Um, it's as simple as placing it on the stock, butting against the track, and making a slide cut. It, it's it's kind of like a portable miter saw. When the saw finishes the cut, it actually slides back. The track spring automatically brings it back to a starting point. The front edge of the saw aligns, like I said, perfectly to the with the saw's blade. And this setup allows the user to make repeated, precise cuts. The HK55 is all about bringing the saw to the material. And recently we were framing a pressure treated deck with 16 foot two by 12s. Having the ability to square size and crown the lumber at the pile was a huge time saver. And we made those cuts right there with the HK55. The, the HK Carpenter saw comes, mine came with the FS420 uh, track. It's 16 and a half inch long, it's mounted to it. It is surprisingly light and not awkward. Um, we also used it to uh, size up a bunch of 20 foot PVC deck boards. We squared them all off at the pile, flawless. Uh, the saw cut the PVC decking easily, smoothly, and cleanly, just like Festool track saws do, right? Time is saved versus using a miter saw. Talk a little bit about the blade change because I really like how they did this. There's a fast fix lever at the top of the handle that's really innovative. The fact that you don't have to fumble hand over hand to hold a wrench and push the blade lock button down is great. And so basically inside this, this fix, easy fix lever, Securely hidden is an Allen wrench. As you flip it open, there's an Allen wrench hidden right inside there. Really nicely designed. So what about improvements? Did Festool knock it out of the park? I think they did, but they, they, they missed the boat on a few things. The depth of cut. The saw is aimed at framers or framing side of carpentry or trim work. And most of the time, yeah, I get it. We're making 90 degree, cut, degree cuts, but there's times when we need to cut rafters, a bevel cut, or maybe like an equal pitch jack rafter or hip hip cut or something and because of the lesser degree of cut when attached to the FSK track we're not able to make those cuts. The blade is only six and a quarter inches in diameter and when only cut two by material at a 45 when taken off of the track not when on the track. So I question Festool's logic here in we're using a track enhanced saw to make perfect cuts why would we want to take it off of the track? Festool does offer the HK85 in Australia with a much deeper 
depth of cut, and I explained those specifics in the article. Um, there's no rafter hook. Everybody's talking about that. We all hope that the next generation will have a rafter hook. You know, we did a fair amount of cutting off of saw horses right at the pile of wood. The lack of a rafter hook meant that when we rested the saw down, we rested it on the dirt or in the mud, and that creates that creates three issues. First of all, it's a trip hazard. Second, I gotta bend down to pick it up. And third, it's a risk, there's risk of damage if someone steps, trips, or drops something on it. In this day and age, all saws should have a hook, especially saws aimed towards framers. People often think the term rafter hook means you have to be working or framing up on a roof. And no, this saw is most likely going to be designated as a ground saw. I, we all get that. It's, a, it's an awesome for cutting rafters on the ground and, and uh, a rafter hook would, would certainly be a welcomed addition. The last thing I wanna just point out is there's the movable point on the FSK rail and we found it really tough to adjust this movable knob or whatever it's called. I, I don't know what the name of it is. The adjustment was not easy and it slowed us down a bit in trying to get that adjustment to move. Overall guys, I really do see this HK55 saw as a game-changing technology and a go-to tool for rafters, stringers, gable, walls, trim, etc. Especially trim, working off staging stuff. It gives a carpenter the ability to make miter saw quality cuts, straight, angled, or beveled with that miter saw accuracy. The FSK420 cross-cutting rail makes the saw into an accurate, repetitive cutting machine. So my thoughts are being able to make repeated 50 degree angle cuts over and over again without tracing a line, using a square, or carrying the board to the miter saw over there, or having to you know, lug around lumber is huge. Think about the ease and flexibility of having a circular saw, a track saw, and a portable handheld miter saw all in one. The best thing about the HK55 saws is that they bring the saw to the work. Envision yourself cutting rafters at the pile, stair stringers, or even trim cuts up on staging without having to carry the miter saw up there. I'm Rob Robillard. We'll see you guys at the next review. And please remember to click that subscribe button down in that corner. We need your support. See you next time.